okay viewers now we want to learn about the conditional statement uh, in logics and proof so <coughs> what are what is the conditional statement see if you have uh, two prepositions p and q then their conditional statement is expressed like this p implies q okay uh, this is also read like this if p then q or uh, one way to write is this and the second way to write is this q whenever p okay so uh, these are the two ways of uh, writing uh, the conditional statement whenever you are given uh, p and q prepositions okay so we now read the definition that what do we mean by uh, implication okay this symbol means implication so <clears throat> let p and q be two preposition then the conditional statement p implies q is the preposition if p then q okay and we say that the conditional statement p implies q is false uh, if p is true and q is false okay so the result of uh, this is uh, false if p implies q is false if p is true and q is false and it is true otherwise uh, this p it is called hypothesis oh, and another name is antecedent or premise and q is called conclusion or it is called consequence okay so p is called hypothesis and q is called conclusion so uh, here we are given uh, one question okay uh, in which we are given a preposition p uh, p is a preposition that maria learns a discrete mathematics Okay. Maria learns discrete mathematics uh, and the Q is the statement uh, Maria will find a good job so we want to write P implies Q statement it is something like this if okay whenever you want to write P implies Q statement it always begins with if okay if then write the p statement if maria learns discrete mathematics once you write your p statement completely after that write then then write the q statement okay then she in place of Maria right she okay she will find a good job okay if Maria learns discrete mathematics then she will find a good job okay so in this way you can write P implies Q statement now we learn the truth table of P implies Q okay now in order to understand this okay uh, i give you one uh, uh, example uh, suppose that the p is a statement you or in delhi okay then you born in India okay so you see that that uh, Delhi uh, is the capital of India okay so India is a uh, uh, bigger set okay and uh, Delhi is a smaller set okay so you see the first statement uh, uh, is this that if you are born in Delhi then you are born in India so this statement is true okay this is uh, 
perfectly fine okay now next is this that if you are born in delhi okay uh, then you are not born in india so this statement uh, it is impossible okay this is impossible so as it is impossible that is why it is false okay that is why it is false okay because if you are born in delhi it means that you are born in india so that is why it is impossible so whenever uh, you have uh, impossible case then you write f okay uh, next is this that if you are not born in delhi then you are born in india so it is quite obvious that if you are not born in delhi so it may happen that uh, you are born in uh, india okay i mean in you may be born in any of the other uh, city of the india okay so this statement is uh, not impossible so whenever you have not impossible case then you always write true here okay now next is this that if you are not born in uh, delhi okay then you are not born in india okay so this is also uh, not uh, impossible case okay so that is why uh, here it is true okay it is possible that if you are not born in uh, delhi okay then uh, you uh, are not born in india okay you may you may be born in uh, south america like this okay so that is why this statement is true so what we conclude is this that whenever uh, p statement is true and the q statement is false then the answer is false okay or the other way to learn this uh, p implies q is this that every time you write the result of this q okay you see that if it is true then it is true if it is false it is false if it is true it is false but when both the statements they are false okay then the result becomes true okay so while writing the answer of p implies q what you know what you do you just pay attention to this q only okay write all the results of q uh, column okay but whenever both p and q they become false then in that case you can write true okay so this is another way to learn this thing okay so uh, in practice we will use this concept that whenever uh, we have p implies q what we will do we will always uh, see that what are the entries in the columns of q okay we will copy those entries in the result and whenever both p and q statements they are false then it becomes true okay now now next we want to learn converse contra positive and inverse okay so see if you are given p implies q then the converse of this is q implies p okay and the inverse of this is negation of p implies negation of q okay and the contra positive is contra positive is uh, negation of q implies negation of so uh, these are the things which you need to remember that how to write the converse uh, inverse and the contra positive okay uh, so more about it will be discussed in the next video lecture okay then